Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's broadcast. Always honored when people take of their valuable time to receive from this ministry. Every Thursday evening, 6.30 Eastern, AbnerSuarez.com and all our social media channels, we premiere a new broadcast. If you want to see archived broadcasts, you can go on AbnerSuarez.com, also to our YouTube page. I'm honored this week to have, once again, if you missed part one on walking out the call of God, what to do. If you got this call, don't quite know where it's going, it's not happening. Watch that broadcast, just some real great wisdom Reveal from someone who's walked it out and from someone who puts the Word of God first place. Well, Pastor Dave, Apostle Dave, you, this is year 11 of Redemption House Life Center. We talked a little bit about the conception of that. You talk about, or excuse me, you, the, the, the kind of the, the theme of your ministry is a presence-driven ministry. What, is, what does that mean? Uh, well, we take pretty serious the presence of God. Uh, Monday night, for example, we were supposed to be having school, which we kind of did, but it was a different... You have a school ministry. Supernatural school, and, and in that supernatural school, we're getting ready for class, <laughs> and next thing you know, like, my first year teacher falls on her face, Audrey falls on her face, and falls on her face, everybody starts getting incapacitated, and the joy of the Lord just hits the room. So you have a choice, like we have a program or you have a choice, the Holy Spirit's moving. So for most people, that sounds really obvious, but a lot of times you don't realize the Lord oftentimes shows up like in a cloud the size of a man's hand. That's right. And it doesn't look the same as what's going to happen that night. Because if you've seen the end of the night, you definitely go that way. But when Good. you just see... Uh, the small thing that you can press into uh -huh. to allow, and you, you've you experienced it's this good. during ministry. It's good. You're watching for that vein where God, oh, there's a God vein right there, and you just uh -huh. start journeying. Uh, Bill Johnson kind of re recorded it this way. When he went to Reading, he says, anybody here want revival? Everybody goes up to the front. He said one lady's hand started moving like this uh -huh. out of the whole crowd. Yeah, it wasn't said, like everybody's laid out. Yeah, right. He yeah. no, wasn't like, who wants revival? And everybody comes up and he's like, and the whole crowd falls out under the power of God. No, one lady's finger starts moving. And he said revival's here. Based on one person's finger, that, that's how he saw in that smallness he could step into something great. By seeing the Lord move. So presence driven literally means that we're following the cloud. We want to, if God's not going, we're not interested in going. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be a mega church. We want to be a presence church. If a presence church can be a mega church, great. If you're not going there, we're not going there. Mm -hmm. We just want God's presence in everything we do. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only way I personally can actually live. Is to be in God's presence. Because there's so much... Uh, crazy things out there in the world i have to be centered in his presence keeps my peace of mind keeps my joy alive keeps my love on um, these are things that matter to me and so because of that when god started negotiating with moses and says hey you can go ahead before me i'll make you great i'm gonna do great things i'm gonna give you 2.5 kids and a mega mansion and moses is like this stuff doesn't matter to me yeah yeah if you're not going I'm not going because I came here for you to be with you. I didn't come here so you can make Moses a great nation. Hmm. And that's the big differentiator uh, of churches. I think in the last days is there's going to be Good. people that are lovers of self, lovers of ministry and lovers of fame and power. And there's going to be people that are lovers of God and out of that love for God the right things are the same things will still flow. Yeah, yeah. But the distinction is what they really love, and um, I think it's really important that we keep our heart tethered to that. And every once in a while, in the business of life, we just gotta rewind and say, like, I feel dried up. I need some God time, and and yeah. that that heart for God's presence will cause like a deer to pan after the water brook, you know, and just I need you, God. You get go get away. Go sit on sit on a dock on the river, or go get alone with God somewhere that you connect well. It's awesome. 
you know, I was thinking something you said just even about your experience this past Monday in your school of ministry. I was thinking to the first time I ever did like uh, a retreat. I think it was 2013 and it was away. We went to this retreat center and just all these people just totally dialed in to the Lord, hungry. And one of the things I kept is we called it prophetic intensives. We're focusing on on the development of that and people that weekend. And one of the things that I kept saying, always obey the Lord, always obey the Lord. So it's Saturday night and um, I, uh, Ruth, who's been with me up. up oh, yeah. I, yeah, I was like, she was supposed to minister that night. And she did, but it was just way different than we thought. And as we're worshiping, I'm sensing just like, I'm literally like, I'm going to fall. Like, I'm going to fall. Like, I do I give myself over to this? And that's one of the things I've learned with the Lord that you often have a choice. Like, and I'm going, God, I have to, like, I have to steward this service and my friend, you know, I've, I spoke last night. She needs to speak tonight. And he says to me, he said, are you going to do what you've been telling people that they should do? You, but you have, I, I knew that he was giving me this choice. And I remember it was like the Lord, like I just, as soon as I Ooh. gave myself over to it, yeah. it was like, boom, I'm on the Holy floor. Ghost. <laughs> I, I've completely given over to what the Lord is doing in the room. That's awesome. But that night is still talked about. In fact, there's people that come to retreats year after year. Like I was here the first retreat and I just, I want like, if it was going to happen again, I didn't want to miss it. And God still moved powerfully, but it's still talked about. And there's video from that night of God. Like there's these pockets of God just this person's getting delivered. This person's getting the word of the Lord. And I'm on the front of the room. I'm supposed to be leading whatever is <laughs> happening that weekend, just totally encountering the Lord, drunk. But God was doing what he wanted to do in that room. And I believe also that even like over the last number of weeks, there's been a few times where similar type of anointings where even the Lord was like, I was thinking, so Lord, what do you like? What do you, he's like, just let me minister to people. Don't even pray for anyone. Just, just talk about what I'm doing and to watch people receive in that way. And I think too, one of the things I've even learned in corporate gatherings, one of these meetings was actually pretty lot with, with, with a lot of people is a lot of people don't know what to do when it's just the presence of the Lord. And I think one of the greatest things that as a leader in the body of Christ and wanting people to encounter the Lord is you let them be okay with being uncomfortable. Even sometimes I find that Pentecostals, all they know how to do is shout in tongues. It's like, well, no, that's not actually what God's emphasizing right now because they almost feel like they have to do something in the presence of the Lord. And then there's this awareness, too, of what God does in these meetings and I, I was talking about it this morning. They were interviewing me. Like, it's it, I have this passion for that presence, not just to be limited to that meeting, but you actually learn how to live with that presence. You're in the marketplace. You learn how to live with that presence when you're when you're you're dealing with your kid who's driving you nuts. You learn how to like. It's not just these moments that come in. Like, oh, wasn't that awesome? We experienced. So we so we can sort of get through life. It's to live with an awareness of that presence in like everything that we touch it was in the old testament cloud by day fire by night and i think it was a prophetic invitation to learn how to live a lifestyle of being presence focused yeah that's really awesome yeah i love that yeah so you have a obviously there's some features and i want maybe talk about i don't know if tension's the right word but Obviously, you have a curriculum that you'd like to get to your students. You plan, you know, uh, I know when I come and minister for you, you get that thing on Sunday morning. He's got this person through the transition. Can you talk about, though, the necessity of because here's one thing I have learned also as a leader. And, you know, we have a meeting tonight is uh, structure actually facilitates and order facilitates an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. 
I've learned that I, I still remember years ago, like when it was like this organized thing of praying for people because it was organized in such a way it facilitated a powerful move of God. I've had times where like, I can't, the Lord told me I can't do anymore because there's not a structure in place to take what's happening here. So maybe talk about that. Cause I know there's organization, there's systems, there's, there's ideas, there's concepts that the Lord has given you within the context of a present centered church and how you administrate that as a leader. That's a pretty good question. So yeah, uh, I ask it questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so all of this has to do with like following the Holy spirit, but the Holy spirit does want a structure to work off of. So um, frame frames, he frames everything. Frame framework is at what he does, right? So we're we're framed with bones, and uh, and those bones he put the life source. So dry bones is when the dries up the bones. You know we're we're we remove the marrow when the marrow is gone from the bones, the life source is gone because marrow produces the blood and life's in the blood according to Hebrews. So when you think about these kind of things, it's like God wants to be the guide of your life, and then he as a leader he makes you the river guide, right? Hey, That's don't good. go over That's here. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's some rocks over here. We yeah. don't want yeah, anybody yeah, yeah, to fall yeah, out of the yeah, boat yeah, and yeah. get scraped up. So we're going to go over here. So the structure is really to help people that are newer to the experience to be able to jump Scary. in. Yeah. And that's what's critical because otherwise they sit back like, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are people doing here? They're like, really, I don't know if I ever want that to happen to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you yeah, have yeah, to yeah. say like, these guys are experiencing something. Yeah, yeah. Right? You have to tell them they're not just uh, being. God's not just deciding to act crazy, but it's kind of like, you know, whatever the Lord gives you. Maybe, hey, it's like like being tickled, and you're a little kid, and you, you just can't control <laughs> yourself. You know, you got to be able to articulate language, whatever God gives you, but you're facilitating a move, whether that's how to pray for a room that size, uh huh, uh, how to have an altar call. Where's God going that's with good. that? Uh, are you going to do this or this? Or are you going to have different parts? Or, you know, um, do you feel like the Lord's leading in a different direction? Sometimes it's it's like drop where you're going. We're going in a different direction. I, you know, appreciated you preparing for what you did, but we're right, not right. going to do that at all. Yeah. And so in school, you know, I, sometimes I have to double up my lessons and just try to catch back up because I don't want to necessarily miss something, but I just won't be able to go as deep. Yeah. Because God decided to crash in on a meeting, and we said yes, do it. Uh -huh. It was so funny because Audrey and my professor, you know, Anne mm -hmm. and no Clark. Way. So she gets up, goes to she. I said, I feel like I'm supposed to go up and facilitate now. So the other lady was doing a great job, and then Anne gets up at the same time. I get the word. Anne gets up like she's gonna go facilitate or go help. Right? She gets up, and as soon as she gets up, she stands. And she goes right on the floor. <laughs> I was like, okay, so I'm supposed to get up and do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was my sign, right? That she she absolutely couldn't do it. So I said, man, this is awesome. So I'm facilitating in a very abstract, it's almost like being an artist, which I'm very left brain. So yeah. Yeah, God yeah. makes me pretty uncomfortable, but I, I come to love it because I love when watching God move in those beautiful times. So I'm more of a scientist, right? But uh -huh. So I love the science behind everything. So having the structure is critical because it helps the si it helps the art move, right? If your paint was was so thin that when you went to paint with it, it just ran down the thing, you'd never make something that expressed what you were trying to say. Mm -hmm. And I think God wants to express things with both the structure or the science and the art behind it, right? Where he can be really free and people uh, all across different dimensions of thinking and and just who they are can actually receive something great from God. And so I think that's why God doesn't want to leave any of us out. Yeah. So your strategy, somebody comes to Redemption House Life Center, like, hey, I feel connected here. How do I? I've never seen anything like this, but I want to grow in it. What What are like the, uh, in a sense, the systems you have in place as a body? And then maybe take it to an even deeper place of how do you what do you view the local church as the ecclesia how, how do you see that how do you see what do you see as god's plan for that like because i know there's sometimes uh usually the same 
vision, but it's expressed differently. What? How, let's just back up there. How do you see the body of Christ? What, what, how do you see? What? How would you define a local church and what you're doing? And then how do you see that as being an on ramp to make disciples? A lot of good questions, actually. Four. <laughs> so, uh, so loaded. We just had a new person come that's been with us a couple months, but she's been getting so radically touched. She she's uh, fresh out of retirement from the Air Force. Wow. And she says, I, I've never in my life been part of a church, but for some reason I just want to be a part of everything God's doing here. Mm. And she is, uh, you know, very, very, very prominent in the Air Force. She has a lot of influence from being there. Uh, but most important is I'm starting to realize God's calling people out because of his presence. They want more, mm-hmm. right? And so a church has two options, right? They can become a family, which is the priority. Kingdom is all family first. And then you have to decide, are you the kind of family that wants to equip your people? Are you the kind of family that just wants to have, uh, you know, life together together? And doesn't really focus much on discipleship. Mm-hmm. Um, I I tend to think that the the ecclesias, the called out ones, are called to actually raise up, empower, and equip, which is more of a fivefold definition, right? Right. So I our our church model is more of a fivefold model now right. that's been established, and our goal is to make sure the saints are fully equipped, so they'll be mature sons of the Most High God. So they won't be easily tossed by every wind of doctrine, you know, mm-hmm. Ephesians 4 stuff. So all of these things are critical. And so as a church, I feel like we're called to equip, send some, raise up some to equip even more. So replicating yourself, rather that means you're replicating to send or replicating to build. They're all the same thing. Yeah. People will know I'm called to build with you. Some will say I was called to be empowered to go. Mm-hmm. That's both amazing right right the key is that everybody's not supposed to go and everybody's not supposed to stay yeah and they yeah, yeah. and the churches thinks everybody's supposed to stay right and the people when they hear a outside anointed evangelist they hear everybody's supposed to go so it's just a real bad mix because we're saying go 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 from the from these big conferences that we're getting uh equipped in and then at the local church we're like singing kumbaya and how are you doing today? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're going to eat chicken after church? Oh, it's going to be great. And we're just doing life together, but not being intentional in empowerment and equipping and discipleship. So, you know, so, one of the things I've seen, though, is you bring up an interesting point. I think, too, there's a disconnect between you can be sent, but always be connected to your family. Like I say, if it's really a family. Yes. Or even like this thought, and I know this is an as- this is an aspect of it, of like, if and I'm seeing it in my home church and I'm seeing it done beautifully, I think like, oh, he's the senior guy. So he's retired or he's handed over. So he has to leave. I've never seen that in a family. I yeah. see, you know, like grandpa, yeah, he, you've, I, you've given I'm over be a dad, you know, <laughs> in, in eight months, but it doesn't take my dad's role away. Yeah. So there could be people who sent, but still are are interconnected to That's so important. Yeah. So. I think that's that's an aspect of it too. Just that 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 is not you don't see it done very well sometimes. And that's because family's not done well. Right. Right. When family's done well, you you know that when you go, you're going to be looping. Mm-hmm. Right. Hey, I'm going to come to family reunions. Hey, I might even come back and get fed for a while. Right. Right. And get filled back up. I might get come and get, get equipped because you guys have grown so much. Because a lot of times when people get sent and they're doing a work. They're going to be pulling off of where you were, mm-hmm. right? That's By good. Two years later, the whole a whole training center is going to be in a totally different dimension. That's so good. when they come back through, they're going to be able to accelerate because they've been applying. Now they're going to come back to train, equip. Hey, good to see the family. Get loved on. Get your peace back in order. You know yeah, whatever's yeah. Uh, deficient, and go back to running whatever God's called you to do. But yeah, I think multi campus type of environments are are going to be a big thing in the future for churches that are equipping centers. Mm. Uh, so campus mindsets versus I, I just want to have my own thing so I could be my own boss. Mm-hmm. I said, man, that's just such a bad thinking, right? Because we can do so much more together when we partner 
with uh, a vision to take take over a city or when we take a, a vision to take over a technology sector or we say hey we're going to we're going to go do something brand new in another country that will cause uh the township to flourish all around us so those kind of things are good but you're not going to do them by yourself so you either leave by yourself and do things from scratch which will take a long time yeah a longer time De- decades yeah yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a decades when you start from scratch. And that's what they, they aren't thinking. They're like the sheep. Samuel said I was king now. Dad didn't recognize me. Yeah, yeah. Jesse, you didn't recognize the anointing on, on my life. You saw the man of God. He made all my brothers wait for me. And now you just disrespect me and try to put me back there. You should put Eliezer back there because he was the one that should have been and he wasn't. He should be the sheep guy now. And why are you putting me back? It's so like the the way I feel like I'm not going to stereotype, but there are people that literally get a, an anointing and they think that they're ready. And the the fact that we're not willing to go back to toilets mm-hmm. is the most effective sign how not ready we are. Mm. Right. The anointing calls us to lower still. Yeah. The higher we go, the lower we have to be, just like just like any skyscraper. You know, mm-hmm. you've heard those analogies. So we have to go lower to go higher. We can't just go higher and higher until we, because that's the way you topple. Now, now here's a good question that I think that most people who are tracking with the Lord, I think this is really important. Like for me personally, I have where I know where I'm living right now, but here's about like. Sometimes too, like now being married is like, hey, can you like come out and like spend time with the rest? Because I'm like, there's always something for me to do because I know where I'm at, but this is where I want to go. This is where I want to expand. These are some things I want to forge into. What's the, how do you deal with that? Kind of like, okay, I know God's done some amazing things. And I'm kind of saying, oh, this is awesome what God's done. But I know this is where I want to go. This is the vision of where I want to expand to that tension that's always a a great tension and the key is so godliness with contentment is great gain right right? it's not that i'm not so happy so right so but when you're not content where you're at that means you're broken where you're at Mm -hmm. and god won't doesn't move broken things forward Mm -hmm. he calls broken things to be healed yeah so his top priority is your heart Mm -hmm. and if you keep that in mind then god's like hey you want to go here I'm I'm calling you here. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, but right now you're broken and you're not actually even paying attention to what I'm trying to do right now. Let's say let's say you weren't content. Mm-hmm. Not you, just yeah, yeah, someone's yeah, sure. not content. In that lack of contentment, God's trying to bring healing there. But what the more you focus on where you feel like God's calling you, the more it's going to cause the discontentment to rise up. That's right. And then, you know, that's when you say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah, yeah. But are you sick and tired enough to be healed in your heart so right, God exactly. could take you forward. Yeah, yeah. So that's the kicker, right? So it's like, it's not that you're sick and tired. I'm just going to leave. I'm going to leave the church because I'm so sick and tired. Yeah, no, yeah. They they aren't holding you back. Yeah, I promise yeah, yeah. you yeah, yeah, that yeah. God's family's not ever holding you back. Uh-huh. And that's why I said, if, if God could release Nebuchadnezzar to be a blessing to Daniel, right? right who's one of the most evil kings, uh-huh. surely he could probably tell your pastor or... Or whoever you're under, whatever ministry gift you're under, hey, release them. Hey, bless them. Hey, call them higher. Hey, make them part of your team. God could do that in one second with one of his people. He's doing it with evil kings. Yeah, and yeah. we trusted God could do it with them for Daniel's life. But we can't do it for a godly person in my life. That's twisted, right? So the tension is where I'm at to where I'm going. And that actually is... God's God's call on your life versus where you're currently developed to. Mm-hmm. So in our church, we actually have a thing called a growth track. And I'm actually oh, yeah, asking practicality here, asking every ministry, what's your growth track? Uh, Papa Roy has been ordained pastor. I said, what's your growth track? He's going to start with care group pastor. Um, um, I let, let me give you a Steve Backlund. This is yeah. a really good one. You, you date people with responsibility before you marry them with the position and i agree with that so yeah. so we're we're giving care group pastor duties 
to see who's actually excited and wants to be a servant, wants to wants to be a shepherd, has the right hearts. Then we can put them in places for care pastors. Then we find out who wants to raise up these kind of care pastors and we start giving them greater duties to uh, lead the actual care pastors. Those people will start the duties of an ordained pastor to eventually become an ordained pastor. Mm-hmm. So that's our growth track just for that. But we have growth track for deliverance, for the prophetic. All these things are like, if I'm a visitor in your deliverance, if I sit here for 10 months, where am I at? Good. If you can't answer that on my day one, then I'm kind of like just swimming with you. I don't know. Do I just come when I feel like it? Right, right. You know, yeah, and yeah. that's how most ministries are run it's true. inside the church. But they need to be ran with more intention and they need to be ran uh, even with the, the small group feel. So those two things are what we're working on and uh, part of the strategies the Lord brings because how do you get from here to here? Uh, usually you study what here looks like and see all the deficiencies of where you're yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Personally, uh, mm-hmm. uh, nothing nothing that God wants to do in your life is outside of you. Mm-hmm. Once you're ready, That's right. God will put everything in place yeah. that you need. He yeah, has yeah. everything you need pertaining to life and godliness. I think that's a, a key. Not only we're obviously we're talking about a ministry context, and we've got about one minute left, so I need to pray. But I think that's a key. You just said something really important. A lot of people are waiting, like for the prophecy. They're waiting for the lightning bolts, and they don't realize. And I'm going to close with this, so I can let you pray. Your future's on the inside of you. Yeah, it really is. The Lord is your future, yeah, right? Yeah, and so your future is on the inside of you. So what are you doing with what's on the inside of you? Dave, I want you to pray for the people as we land this plane. Oh, thank Beautiful you, Beautiful wisdom. Thank Just you, whatever Lord. the Lord gives you. Well, I Shabbat bless you haya. in the name of Jesus that you would be so fortified by this broadcast. Yep. Holy Spirit, we just say come to every person that hears your voice right now and that feels called. When when there's a call in your life, you've got to nurture that gifting. And I feel like the Lord in this second part is really emphasizing our desire to rise up in practical ways to to begin to seek the Lord, to begin to go after his presence, to begin to be a worshiper, to begin to be a person of the word. And as we grow and blossom, God's going to bring everything you need for every step of the way. He's the one that orders the steps. He's the author and the perfecter. So I bless you to know the Lord like never before. Just break off every lie. Break off every hindering spirit. Everything that's demonic that's tried to oppress you has no power. You're called to tread on scorpions and serpents, and they shall by no means harm you.